when sand enters our engines, uh, it goes into the hot section that essentially uh, melts the material. And you have this molten sand within the engine that then becomes deposited on the surface of engine components such as turbine blades. These components have very fine tolerances. If you start building up material such as sand or solidified sand, then you will actually cut off airflow. Uh, once you cut off airflow, the engine can no longer function. Uh, in 2015, helicopters that were undergoing training exercises actually experienced failures due to the presence of sand being ingested in the engine. We were training in so-called brownout conditions where helicopters fly very low and they kick up a lot of dust, sand, depending on the environment. Um, and in that case, uh, the engines actually were consumed or engulfed in this cloud of sand that melted and actually caused the engines to fail, uh, and that actually resulted in the loss of life of a couple of Marines. Uh, so we're trying to develop materials that can prevent uh, the ingestion of sand, the accumulation of sand, and other chemical degradation induced by this sand that enters our engines. So we decided to look at ultra high temperature ceramics, which actually are the materials with the highest melting points of any known uh, material to, to man. In this case, uh, borides, hafnium diboride and zirconium diboride. How do these specific materials behave when you subject them to molten sand uh, at different temperature ranges relevant to our engines and for prolonged uh, durations of time? Here at the labs, we use a special sand uh, that is an average of the sands that you would find in various parts of the world, and we call that sea mass. We took the sea mass, we uh, mixed that sand with the, uh, the ceramic, either zirconium diboride or hafnium diboride, uh, heated it up to various temperatures, and then we, we took the uh, resultant product um, and prepared it for examination under microscopes. We know that our future engines, uh, we need them to operate at even higher temperatures in order to have better thermodynamic efficiency, which gives us better performance, the ability to maneuver, the ability to have uh, good range and good fuel economy. And we wanted to essentially evaluate uh, how do these ultra high temperature ceramics behave in comparison with our state of the art materials that we know are very vulnerable to this type of uh, sand attack, if you will. At MPS, uh, we have a pretty diverse set of researchers that participate in this research. We have graduate students who come from the field. Most of them are naval officers. Some of them are here pursuing master's degrees. Some of them are pursuing graduate degrees. Uh, we have staff. A lot of staff has actually a lot of military ex experience and is familiar with some of these challenges. Uh, and sometimes we also bring in uh, interns from the Naval Academy, from local community colleges, as well as universities uh, across the country. And these students participate in the research by uh, running the furnace, running high temperature experiments on these new materials, and then conducting uh, advanced electron microscopy based characterization of the materials in order to precisely characterize what reactions took place, at what temperatures did they take place, uh, how stable are our materials, are our materials going to degrade at some temperatures, not others. Uh, and that's actually how we discovered some interesting uh, facets of our research where our materials were actually performing better uh, at higher temperatures, which was not expected. What we're finding in the microscope uh, after taking the reaction products out of the furnace uh, is that at higher temperatures the zircon disappears and we're, we're left with just zirconium oxide. So we're very excited that our early findings have shown that we may have a material that could potentially address the sand problem uh, that's widespread in different uh, services, not just Navy but also Army, Air Force, and this has been a collective effort between uh, ourselves, different labs, the defense labs, as well as universities. And we're pretty excited about the possibility of being able to scale up our materials and demonstrate that you know, materials that we studied here at MPS may actually be able to transition onto our actual uh, fleet in terms of our different vehicles or helicopters. And they may provide a solution that enables us to operate in sand laden environments, in brownout conditions, uh, and actually tolerate those conditions and 
perform well in those conditions and that could ultimately lead to saving lives and improving our readiness and our sustainability of our fleet. Uh, and that's something that we were very excited about, the ability to have our research make an actual impact on the fleet uh, and the Navy.